Welcome. Here's a little issue that confuses many people. It's about the balance point, or the centroid, of a figure. What do I mean by that? Uh, let's take a square, for example, just to be very specific. Imagine I had a square cut out of some sort of heavy, thick, uniform material, like a sheet of metal, a sheet of plywood, or something. And the question is, is there a particular point in the square, you're probably going to guess the answer is going to be the center, because it always seems to be the center of the squares, such that I could balance that, that, that figure at that point. Namely, if I had some sort of vertical rod or something like that, could I balance the square about that point? And the answer is yes. In an ideal world, most people would be convinced that yes, that center of the square would be an ideal balance point. A thin rod, a needle, a nail or something, if I just had the square sitting right at the tip, being at the center of the square, it should balance, ideally. So people call that the balance point or the centroid of the square. All right, we can go a little bit further. Um, if the square is actually balancing right at this point, then it should balance along any line, like if I had just like the edge of a knife. I'm just trying to draw it this way. So imagine that's like a knife edge that goes through that line. Whoops, there's my attempt at a knife. Well, certainly that square would also balance along that edge because if it balances at the point, giving it more points to balance on is only going to help it out. If it's able to balance right at the single point, it'll certainly balance along the whole line of points. And that makes sense because I've got equal amount of areas to the left and the right, everything's symmetrical. So I believe that if the square is going to balance at a centroid, then it's going to also balance along any knife edge that goes through the centroid. That's fine. All right, here's where the paradox lies. An equilateral triangle also has a balance point. Let me see if I can quickly draw one in a fairly decent way. And most people probably guess that the balance point of an equilateral triangle is going to be what they like to think of as the center where the three altitudes of the triangle meet. Not very equilateral. But, you know, if I cut out an equilateral triangle, nonetheless a perfect one, and try to balance it on some sort of thin rod sitting up in the air, I bet I could do it, at least in my theoretical ideal world, that there is that the whole thing is going to balance perfectly at that single point. Which means, again, if I took a knife edge, gave it more edges to balance on, more points to balance on, like a knife edge like this. Do do my attempt to draw a knife edge again. Not very good at this, sorry. Do 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 do. That will certainly balance along that whole line of points. Because if it balances at one single point, giving it more points to balance on is only going to help it out, not make it worse. So here we go. So that means this equilateral triangle will balance along, they say, this line as well. And that makes sense because I can see there's an equal amount of area to the left and area to the right. Balance perfectly. But here's what confuses people. Here's the paradox. It would also balance along a knife edge that goes, say, this way. Again, because if it goes through the balance point, giving it more points to balance on is only going to help it out, not make it worse. Which means that my triangle is going to balance on a line, supposedly, parallel to one of the sides of the triangle. And here's the worry. If I was to actually now uh, look at the areas I'm dealing with, let me see if I can paint them in so you can see two areas. I claim this is problematic because the area on one side of that line is not equal to the area on the other side of the line. In fact, I can actually draw this pretty well and convince you of that. Um, I will draw all three lines parallel to the side. And that's not very good. My picture's totally bad and I need, don't need to be that bad. And I'll even draw these guys. So I actually have divided my equilateral triangle into about nine smaller triangles. So, it looks like right now the area to one side of my balancing line, my knife edge, is one, two, three, four units of area. And to the other side, I've got one, two, three, four, five units of area. So it's very strange at first glance that, whoops, that's very bad, that this, uh, oh, I'm making a mess here, sorry, forgive me, that this area on this side of the balancing line of four units somehow magically balances with five units of area on the other side of the line. Most people would argue there's no way then that this triangle can balance across that line right there. Yet, at the same time, that line goes for the centroid, so it should be balancing on that line. So here's my paradoxical question. Does or does not, that doesn't make sense, does, does do or don't, don't or do triangles balance along knife edges that are parallel to one side of the triangle? Just a simple yes or no answer. Now, this is really a physics question. It's also a math question if you know the physics of, uh, of fulcrums and all the rest. But I'd like an explanation for this paradox that most anyone could understand. Just with a you know, little basic math, don't get into calculus, is a very convincing argument that a ninth or 10th grade algebra student 
could understand that would convince me that this triangle either does or doesn't balance along that knife edge. That's my paradoxical question. There we go. So apparently these, these lines of uh, balance balancing don't do or don't have equal area on either side. Mysterious question. Thanks so much.